So one really cool online collection that we have are um, uh, Foucault's uh, lectures, which he had recorded and he wanted disseminated for people to be able to uh, hear his work and scholarship. Um, in, the, in some of the lectures you can hear that there are throngs of people on the outside and you can hear Foucault laughing about people knocking on the door trying to get in. And these are those tapes. These are the tapes that we recorded from. Can you explain what a tape is? <laughs> My name is Giselle Tanas. I'm the head of the Media Resources Center in Moffitt Library. I have a Master's of Library and in Information Science from San Jose State. I did my undergrad work here at Berkeley. My first introduction to the Media Center was actually through an AC course. Um, I took History 7B after my sophomore year of high school, um, and that's how I discovered the Media Center and the UC Berkeley Library. Hi, welcome to the MRC. The Media Center is the library's primary collection of DVD and video materials. Um, we also have a significant collection of sound recordings, um, and we collect in a variety of format, VHS tapes, pneumatic tapes, DVDs, we have some laser discs, audio cassettes. Um, the one thing we don't collect, we don't have any film, so those things are in the Pacific Film Archive. Um, the collection uh, has been built mostly to serve um, humanities and social sciences courses. Um, we do have some materials for the health sciences and physical sciences, but um, really is very strong in humanities and social science work. One of my favorite parts of working in the Media Center is um, there is a place that faculty come to and the undergrads come to where I can have um, great conversations and interaction with the faculty and students. Uh, most librarians are working in an office, they have some time on the reference desk, but um, Jill Schwacko, our operations work leader, and I are in the Media Center. My name is Jill Schwacko, and I work here at the Media Resources Center. I've been here about four years, over four years now. I run a lot of the reservations and the room, room reservations, the equipment management, making sure that everything is up and functioning and working and available uh, as much as possible. So down here we have about 30 stations that are various sizes, but I'm try I've uh, made them so that you can kind of spread out and do homework while you're watching movies or take notes comfortably in a, a kind of dim environment so that it's, uh, you know, you can watch a movie and be comfortable and at the same time be able to kind of kick back and take notes and be productive as well. And then we also have the viewing rooms so that if you want to bring a, a group in, you can schedule a room and actually be able to talk in a more casual atmosphere while watching the movie together. Before we had digital preservation copies of some of the unique archival collections, um, I had a list of my favorite things for which we are the custodian that I would run in and take if the building was on fire. The first thing on that list is a wonderful interview of Malcolm X um, by a grad student, Herman Blake. It was part of Sociology 1A in 1963. Should other black men help that particular person who was attacked? I think you'll find, sir, that there will come a time when black people wake up and become intellectually independent enough to think for themselves, as other humans are intellectually independent enough to think for themselves, then the black man will think like a black man, and he will feel for other black people. And this new thinking and feeling will cause black people to stick together. And then at that point, you'll have a situation where when you attack one black man, you are attacking all black men. Another of my favorite is uh, 
People's Temple meeting with Jim Jones. Um, we don't know how this was recorded, but it seems to be the only copy um, in existence, and it is our most popular item on our internet archive page. The music is extremely catchy. I find myself still to this day singing it and tapping my foot to it. Um, so I can, you can see in this video um, how people could be taken in by Jim Jones, but you also see um, his obsession with his image. There's a moment where he realizes that people can see that he's wearing a Rolex, and he, in a panic, takes it off. That's all captured on that video, and everyone should see it. Those are all available um, via streaming. Uh, they can be found doing a keyword search in OSCICAT. Uh, they can be found by looking at the MRC webpage. Um, they're all available to streaming to the public. And if you are a copyright holder for any of these videos, if you claim copyright for them, please contact me. I would love to speak to you and get some funding together to have them restored. So one of the greatest strength, strengths of this broad-based collection that is the MRC is that we have films that have been out of distribution sometimes for 10, 15, 20 years. And I frequently get a lot of people saying to me, oh, won't everything be streaming in 5 or 10 years? There's a lot of content that will be streaming in 5 to 10 years. I can't tell you how many instructors we've had who've come in and said, oh my gosh, this YouTube clip that I had, it's, it's gone, and it says it was taken down um, by the request of the copyright holder. Aww. But for AC faculty and students, there are uh, thousands, if not tens of thousands, of things in this collection that will not be up for streaming. The filmmakers have died. The footage cannot be relicensed. There are voices and images in this collection that likely will not ever be streamed by a commercial source. It is on the media center to make sure that those things are preserved and accessible for people over time. Video is a very powerful tool to help bring otherwise distant experiences and times to the forefront for undergrads and engage them in an issue or topic. The important thing though is finding both the right video and using the right amount of that video. And that's somewhere where the MRC can really help in identifying well-produced documentaries that are relevant to the subject at hand and also to insist in identifying short clips. Um, our clipping services uh, sort of run the gamut of whatever an instructor is looking for. Some instructors need a lot of help with the technology and the format. Um, some instructors need help finding content. They've maybe been using something but now it feels dated. Um, so we can work with you to find the right content, to give you feedback on what start point we should use and what end point we should use. I really would stress, especially to AC faculty, to come to the Media Center. We will help you generate clips. Um, and in the future, ongoing, we're looking into new ways to have uh, self-service features um, of clipping and I definitely would be looking forward to working with AC faculty um, as sort of my guinea pigs um, to make sure that those new features are working well in the way that instructors need them.